Today, many planes break the sound barrier with relative ease. But it wasn't too many years ago that the sound barrier was just that, a seemingly impenetrable, invisible wall. In fact, many aerodynamicists thought that the sound barrier may never be broken by man, until one man, named Richard Whitcomb, developed a theory called Area Rule that enabled efficient supersonic flight to become a reality. Before October of 1947, attempts to break the sound barrier usually ended in disaster. That was until Chuck Yeager and the X-1 flew through the sound barrier on October 14, 1947. The sound barrier had finally been broken. But there it was what I call a brute force approach in the sense that your rocket just rammed that airplane through the speed of sound. But the drag was so high that they used up all the fuel in just about five minutes. So it was not practical supersonic flight, but it did accomplish the breaking of the barrier. There needed to be a more efficient way to break the speed of sound. Dick Whitcomb set out to find a way. Whitcomb found that when a plane reached near supersonic speeds, the drag around the wings would increase by as much as a factor of five. He saw that much like a bullet, the fuselage was extremely aerodynamic without the wings, but when the wings were added, an aerodynamic bump was causing incredible amounts of drag that was slowing the plane down. It became obvious to him that he had to find a way to take the bump out of the equation. Whitcomb's tests showed that when he added the entire area of wings and fuselage together, the drag, or aerodynamic bump, was exactly the same as the drag of a fuselage with wings. He worked tirelessly to find a solution, when one day, as he was thinking about the problem, the solution hit him like a bolt of lightning. He must indent or pinch in the waist of the fuselage. This new shape of the fuselage would closely resemble the shape of a Coke bottle. Whitcomb was astonished to find that by changing the shape of the fuselage, he took the bump out of the equation and allowed the plane to become as aerodynamically smooth as a fuselage without wings. This very simple fix came to be known as the area rule. I had the idea. Then we built some models to try and demonstrate it. We built uh, airplanes with the Coke bottle state shaped fuselages, and lo and behold, the drag of the wing just disappeared. Now there was when I was really thrilled. I, I, that was far, that was a year or two before anything flew, but there in the wind tunnel showed that it just, it worked perfectly. It was not some oddball theory. It was pr a practical means of reducing drag. When the area rule concept was flight tested on the newly converted F-102 fighter, the plane soared through the sound barrier with ease. Whitcomb's discovery revolutionized the way that supersonic fighters, bombers, and transports were built from the 1950s through today. In fact, the area rule concept is still used on many modern planes, including the B-1 bomber, and the Boeing 747. Dick Whitcomb's intuition and daring led to a revolution in air technology that has forever changed the history of flight. For his effort in developing the area rule concept, Dr. Whitcomb won the prestigious Collier Trophy, which is awarded annually for great achievement in aeronautics and astronautics in America. Coming up, we'll see how NASA researchers are working on a morphing technology that will allow future aircraft to fly like birds. But first, did you know that Jacqueline Cochran was the first woman to break the sound barrier? Cochran broke the barrier May 18, 1953, in an F-86 Sabre jet. At the time of her death in 1980, she held more speed, altitude, and distance records than any other pilot, man or woman, in history.